Hi there, this is Robin Andrews from Comp Academy, and today I want to talk about the Little Man Computer Simulator. Now, this is mainly for A-level, although you may find that it's useful at GCSE as well when they talk about assembly language, um, but certainly at A-level it's going to be very helpful to spend some time studying the Little Man Computer Simulator and its instruction set. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is look at a program which adds numbers together and I'm just going to show you how it works first of all so I've pasted the code here from another file basically from a text editor where I wrote it and if I submit that then you can see it gets um, kind of tidied up okay before getting executed in fact there's an error here so for some reason it doesn't like this line here so let's get rid of that I'm assuming that's what the problem is it's a comment which some versions of the little man simulator use and some don't see if that was the problem. Yeah, that was the problem. Okay. So beware, I'm doing this live. So show you some of the problems you might encounter. That's how we fix that particular issue. So now you can see that it's actually compiled here and we have our instructions in sequential memory locations. Now you need to remember with the von Neumann architecture that the instructions and the data come together. These are the instructions which you will use to write your programs using LMC. You can see it's a very small selection of possible operations. And this is not really realistic. Real assembly language would have a lot more instructions, although it's still very basic compared to higher level languages. But this is a great way of just learning about the very basics of how assembly language works. Okay. So we have instructions to add, subtract, store, load, branch, different types of branching, which we may go into later, but that, that's a bit more advanced. Then we have input and output. We have uh, instruction to end the program. And we also have this way of storing actual data, so storing values. And we use the DAT instruction for that. Okay, so that's the instruction set. So back to our program. This program should add together two numbers. Let's see what happens. We run the program. And you'll see all sorts of things going on. You're going to need to spend quite a bit of time studying this animation. You can actually change the speed if you need to slow it down. Or you can, once you start to understand a bit better, you can put it onto fast. But you're going to need to, to spend some time understanding all the different parts of it. Okay. You get some very helpful messages down here telling you exactly what's going on. So that's certainly a place worth looking. It wants some input at the moment. So I'm going to give it some input. 10, for example. And you can see the fetch cycle is happening. And there's a lot to keep track of. Like I say, you've got your program counter, you've got your instruction register. Remember the instruction, I'll just show you, is the first part of these codes here. It tells what's going to happen. And then you have an, a possible address as well. So you have an instruction part and an address part. Okay, coming back. Just the fetch cycle again, you can see here. Now it needs more input, okay? So let's give it four. So we're expecting 14 at the end, right? Because we had 10 and then four and we're adding. Okay, so this is worth looking at, the address register, okay? That's where we stored the value the first time off in number six. So that's why it's telling us here that we need to go to number six to add, oh, I missed that, to add to the accumulator the value that was in number six, yeah, in address location six. These are all the locations from one to 100 or zero to 99. And remember in von Neumann architecture, the instructions and the data are together, yeah? So you need to really understand that concept. You have here instructions like 306 means perform instruction three to whatever's in memory location six. Okay, so that is a very compact notation and it can be very confusing to start with. So you need to spend a bit of time getting really familiar with this and the more you do it, the more sense it will make, okay? So you can see here, we've got the result we expected. We've got 14, we had 10, we added four. So let's just step you through the lines of code. First of all, imp means input, okay? That means get user input, which we do down here. Then we store it in the location that we've labeled as first. So this is kind of how we do variables in LMC. We just assign a name 
to a location. So this is really just an alias here. If you know what an alias means, it just means another name for something, yeah? So actually first is location six, okay? So the, um, the machine code version doesn't know anything about this label. So store first means store the value that was just input, the value which is on the accumulator. This is the accumulator here. It's where all of the results of our operations is stored. So we store what's on the accumulator into a memory location that we're labeling with this name first. Now in terms of machine code, that means memory location number six. That's this slot here, okay? So we're storing into memory six, which we've labeled as first, the value that was just input, okay? So maybe a little bit complex, but that's what's happening. Then we're inputting again, or we're asking for input again, and that value is going to be stored on the accumulator. So at this stage, once you've input, say, four, which I did here, then four is going to be on the accumulator, okay? Now, what it does then with this add command is it says add to the accumulator the value which is stored in the place that we've labeled as first. And so it means add this 10 that's been stored to what is on the accumulator. So we had four on the accumulator. We added the 10 to it. Yeah, so now we have 14 on the accumulator. And then finally, output means take what's on the accumulator and output it, okay? So you may find that there's a lot going on here that you don't understand. This does take a bit of time to really get used to what's going on, so don't worry if it's not clear to begin with. Once you've run this simulation a few times, tried a few examples for yourself, it will become a lot clearer. I think one of the biggest confusions that people have with this is this business of labels because this is basically how we do variables in LMC, okay? They're not quite the same as variables, they're just labels. So I'll just say again what happens, okay? So this line here, store first, it means store what was on the accumulator, which means what the user just input, okay? Store it into the location that we've labeled as first. So you can see here first, right? And first here, they're referring to the same memory location, which happens to be location six. In a longer program, this would be at the end. Okay, so it wouldn't always be number six, obviously. Okay, but it's this connection between this one here and this one here that's important. Okay, and also later on, this one here is referring to this one here. Okay, so we're going to look at this again. Um, first of all, I'm going to clear the memory to make sure there's no values that have been set by the previous running that I don't want to have been set. And also I th think sometimes it's worth doing this is clicking in there and resubmitting the code just to make sure that it's in memory as you expect, okay? You can see here these instructions are now stored in the memory, okay? So then we can run it. So the fetch cycle. And now it's asking for input, okay? So I'm gonna use the same values that I used before. I used 10 here. And you'll see the 10 gets stored on the accumulator. So this is really important, this accumulator. It's basically where the result of all your calculations is stored. You can see the address register has six in it. That means we wanna go off and see what's in memory location six. All the time the program counter is being incremented. Okay, so now I want some more input. I'm gonna use the same numbers again. I had four last time, I think. Again, it wants to go off to number six. So it's gonna take what's on the accumulator and add the contents of memory location six to it. Okay, the contents were 10. So it's gonna add that 10 to the four that was on the accumulator. And finally, it's gonna output the result. <clears throat> Not quite finally, actually, the final one is the halt instruction. Okay, so you always need to end your programs with halt. Okay, and that's it. So, <clears throat> sorry, I got a frog in my throat. Um, so yeah, basically, it's a little bit complex. You're likely to be confused and you're likely to be frustrated, but hang in there, it does get easier. 
when you do more and more examples, you'll find that with a little bit of practice, it will start to make sense. And you'll have these aha moments where you realize that actually you do understand what's going on. And that's very satisfying. Okay, so good luck with Little Man Computer. And I may make some videos in the future to explain more details. I've also got a couple of um, blog posts giving you slightly more complex examples. So I'll put links to those in the description. I've got one, I think, on multiplication and one on division both of which can be a little bit tricky, but you're definitely going to need to be able to do that kind of complexity for a level. So start with the basics, things like adding and subtracting later on, you can build up to more complex programs, but it's definitely worth spending quite a lot of time on very simple things before you try anything too challenging because it is a little bit confusing. Okay. Good luck. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.